Fordham here, and we're going to talk about solving quadratic equations, but a, a bit harder now. So every time we do this, what we're trying to do is essentially get this to look like ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And the key is we really got to make sure it equals zero. Otherwise, we're not really solving for the roots, which is what we're looking for. So in this example, we have b squared plus 15 equals ab. Now, it doesn't matter that these are different variables. makes no difference. However, the bigger problem is we have 8b on the wrong side, and we don't have anything equal to 0. So what we want to do is we're going to take this right here, and we're going to move it to the other side. So to do that, what we're going to do is, well, do the opposite operation. So we can see that it's already a positive. So to get rid of it, we're going to go ahead and subtract. Now, since nothing on the left side has the same last name, meaning there's no other term with just a b, this doesn't have any b's, and this is b squared, which is different, what I usually do is I just put it off to the side to show that I'm subtracting it, but it doesn't go under anything else. And when we clean this up, 8b minus 8b, well, that cancels out, and that's going to leave us with 0. On the left side, this didn't clean up with anything else. I like to personally write everything in order based on exponents, so I'll usually start with b squared, and now I'll put the minus 8b in here, plus 15. And as you can now see, it looks a little bit closer to something else we've worked with. So from this point on, now all we have to do is factor and solve for the roots. The factors of 15 shouldn't take too long, I think there's only 2, 1 and 15, 3 and 5, add and subtract. Okay, so that's 16, 14, 8, and 2. I happen to be looking for 8 because that's in the middle term. So my factors are going to be b with a 5 and b with a 2. Still equal to 0. All right. Now, we've got to deal with the signs. Since it multiplies to a positive, they're either both positive or both negative. However, since the middle term is negative, that means these are both negative. And the final step, of course, we need to solve exactly for b. We factored it, but now we need to solve for the roots. So to do that, we set each side equal to 0. And we solve them for the letter. So over here, we're going to add 5. Got a little excited here. To both sides, and it'll be b equals 5. So that's one of the roots. And on the right side here, we're going to add 2 to both sides. And that'll give us b equals 2. So that's how you can see us solving for the roots. Here's another example just to show you how they might combine some different techniques here. So we have 3n squared plus 96 equals negative 36n. So again, we have one term over here that we need to join the other side. We need them to all be together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 36n to both sides. And again, it doesn't match anything else over here. So I'm just going to show that it doesn't match, but it's still getting added to that side. So 3n squared, I'm going to rewrite this, 3n squared plus 36n plus 96 equals 0. All right, now we can go ahead and work with this. But it probably, honestly, be a little bit easier to factor out a 3 from everything first. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out a 3. So this becomes 3n squared plus 12n plus 32. Still equal to 0. That didn't change. Now, you might think this comes into play a little bit later when we're solving for the roots, but it actually really doesn't. We are going to factor this. And if we do that, it should work out to n plus 8, n plus 4. Still equal to 0. If you don't believe me, you can go ahead and make the table and check my work. Uh, so now here's the final step. We factored everything. So we're going to go ahead and basically just divide everywhere we see and set it equal to 0. Now, again, this 3, you're probably thinking it matters. But in this case, it actually really doesn't. Watch. I'm going to go ahead and set it equal to 0. Does that make sense? Because I'm pretty sure if it made sense to me, I've been learning the wrong math my whole life. So that's not a root because 3 doesn't equal 0. That doesn't work. However, these other two are going to work out to be roots. So here we go, subtract 8 from both sides. So one of the roots is n equals negative 8. And the other root, n plus 4 equals 0. We'll go ahead and subtract 4. And I get n equals negative 4. So there's my two roots.
Now, there is a situation that does occur sometimes where we might not be able to factor. In this case, take a look at example three here. Now, you can see it's n squared equals negative 5n. We actually only have two terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 5n to both sides first. Again, they don't line up, different last names. So this becomes n squared plus 5n equals 0. Now, you might be thinking, can I factor it? And I've even seen a couple of my students try to do a plus 0 term. And, well, that's not technically wrong. It kind of just messes stuff up. So when you don't have a number to factor at the end, you can tell there's no term without the variable. It's n squared and 5n. What I encourage my students to do is, since there's no number to factor, you just try to look and see what can you pull out of both the terms you have now. Now this is technically, and I'll, this is one of the few times I'll probably write it, and this is technically 1n squared plus 5n. I can't divide either number by anything, so that's going to stay as is. But I can factor out an n from both terms. When I do that, I'm left with n plus 5. Now, if I were to multiply this back out, I could check real quick to make sure I'm doing everything right. n times n is n squared, and n times 5 is 5n. So it worked out. And what we do here is the same thing we were doing before. We've already factored this as much as we can, so we're going to set both sides equal to 0. The only difference is we have a monomial, which is easier to solve, versus a binomial. So we already have, right away, one of the factors, or roots, I should say, which is n equals 0. And over here, we're going to subtract 5. And this will give us the second root of n equals negative 5. And when in doubt, just remember, you can always graph to check it. That's a pretty easy way to guarantee the roots, because it'll cross the x-axis at these two numbers. If it doesn't do it, you may have factored wrong. Thanks for watching.